Welcome back to Through Different Eyes, friends. My name is Dan Gabbert, and I am, through this program, providing God's understanding of life's experiences and his way of healing the mental and spiritual challenges that human beings are experiencing here on Earth. Last time we were together, we learned one of the significant and principal laws of the mind was found in Proverbs 23, verse 7. There in Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And we discovered that our feelings are actually produced by our thoughts and not the actual events. Here is another statement from Dr. David Burns from the University of Pennsylvania um, from his book, Feeling Good. And then I'm going to give you a biblical picture of what Dr. Burns is speaking of here. He says, and I quote, the moment you have a certain thought and believe it, you will experience an immediate emotional response for your thought actually creates the emotion. Taken from his book, Feeling Good, page 12. Now turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5, in the beginning of your Bible, right after 1 and 2 Samuel, you'll find 1 Kings and 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 5, we find the story of Naaman, the captain of the Syrian king's host, the army. Naaman had leprosy. What was so unique about this is Naaman's wife had a servant girl from Israel. And the servant girl told Naaman, Naaman's wife, that there was a prophet in Israel that could actually heal Naaman of leprosy. Naaman believed that young girl, got his entourage together, and went to Israel to see the prophet. To make a long story short, while Naaman was there in Israel, waiting for the prophet's response, prophet Elijah sent Naaman a messenger with instructions as to how to heal his leprosy. And we want to notice Naaman's response. I'm going now to 2 Kings chapter 5, and I'm going to start reading at verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger under him saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times and your flesh shall come again to you. You shall be clean. Naaman, all you got to do is go and dip in the Jordan River. Dip in the Jordan River seven times and you'll be clean. Now watch this. But Naaman was wroth. Verse 11, Naaman was wroth, angry, and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farfa rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Now this is very, very interesting to me. Very interesting that Naaman here, in his response to the message to go dip in the river, got angry. How come? Did you notice that in verse 11? Naaman said, I thought. In Naaman's thoughts, he thought that Elisha was going to come to him in person and do some amazing thing to heal Naaman. But because Elisha didn't do it just like Naaman expected, what did it produce? The thoughts Naaman had in his heart actually produced anger, and he actually went away in a rage. You know, I'm so grateful, though, that there are servants, Naaman's servants, I'd love to meet them, that actually talked that man back into some common sense and, and said, hey, Naaman, Naaman, you have... You've come all this way to get healed. Why don't you try it? I'm so grateful 
that those servants convicted Naaman convinced him to go in the river and dip seven times because Naaman was healed. Now it's interesting to me that not only what we think here affects our emotions, but it also affects our physical health. Dr. Neil Nedley, in his book Proof Positive, states, makes this statement on page one. Many erroneously believe that inherited traits, that means genetic factors, are the primary factors determining their quality of life and how long they will live. For the vast majority of us, our health is primarily dependent on two other factors. Number one, what we put into our bodies, and number two, what we do with our bodies. Now, I'd like to take Dr. Nedley's statement just a little bit farther. Think with me. Who is it that decides what goes into my body and what I do with my body? We do as individuals. And let me ask you, where do we make the decision? Ah, that's right. We make the decision in our thinking. May I suggest that if we are to experience true and lasting healing, not only to our mental and emotional health, but to our physical health, and enhance our life like nothing else can, we must individually decide to get on track and stay on track in our thought life, actually choosing to put our faith in what God says about life situations rather than what I think or what someone else tells me is right or wrong. Would you agree? Well, think on it. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says this, Keep your heart with all diligence. It's talking about the mind. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Do you know what springs out of the heart of our mind? Go to, with me to Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Wow, what a statement. Look at this. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Of course, the heart here being the frontal lobe, where our power of choice is located, where our conscience is located, where our intellect is located, um, and also our will. Out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now what's so interesting is this. Listen to what can come out of the heart of the mind. Mark chapter 7 now. Matthew, Mark. Mark chapter 7, verses 20 through 23. I hope you're beginning to realize how incredibly important it is to make sure that we're putting the right information into our mind. Notice Mark chapter 7 now, verses 20 through 23. Jesus speaking to his disciples here, and he says, He which comes, that which cometh out of a man, that's what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, that's, that's uh, lack of self-control, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. I am so grateful that I can also think good thoughts. You remember what we just read? Out of the good treasure of a man's heart, what I'm thinking in my heart, I can bring forth good things. Wow. Here are the results of a healthy spiritual life. Go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 23. Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Here are some of the fruits, some of the things that come out of a healthy thought life. Galatians chapter 5, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which means great patience, 
gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. I don't know about you, but I just really like the idea of having a thought life. Thoughts that actually produce love and joy and peace in my personal experience. How about you? Dr. S.I. Macmillan, in, his, in the preface of his book, None of These Diseases, makes this incredible statement. Peace does not come in capsules. This is regrettable because medical science recognizes that emotions such as fear and sorrow, envy, resentment, and hatred are responsible for the majority of our sicknesses. Estimates vary from 60% to nearly 100%. Emotional stresses can cause high blood pressure, toxic goiter, migraine headaches, arthritis, heart trouble, gastrointestinal ulcers, and other serious diseases too numerous to mention. As physicians, Dr. McMillan says, as physicians, we can prescribe medicine for the symptoms of these diseases, but we cannot do much for the underlying cause, emotional turmoil." Unquote. Isn't that amazing? Not only is my emotional life affected by what I'm thinking, but amazingly, what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking not only affects my emotions, but it also affects the health of my body. I want a healthier body. How about you? I want to get on the healing path of health, not only mentally and spiritually, but also physically. One more uh, validation from the world of science before we move on to the, the third law. And there, here it is. From Dr. Daniel Amen's book, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life, page 57 and 58. Listen to this closely. This is so amazing. Every time you have an angry thought, an unkind thought, a sad thought, or a cranky thought, your brain releases chemicals that make your body feel bad. Every time you have a good thought, a happy thought, a hopeful thought, or a kind thought, your brain releases chemicals that makes your body feel good. Amazing! Based upon what I'm thinking, I can actually affect every cell in my body. I like the idea of thinking good thoughts and pure thoughts. How about you? That is the reason why God told us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Finally, therefore, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Why? Because my thoughts determine not only my emotional and spiritual health, but also have a great effect on my physical health. And I want better health. How about you? Let's move on now to principle number two. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Very powerful principle. Galatians 6, verse 7, principle number two of the mind. Here it is. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. This principle applies to all dimensions of life. So negative thoughts reap negative feelings in all three dimensions of our nature, physical, mental, and spiritual. So true and positive and hope-filled thoughts reap positive feelings because whatever happens in the heart of your mind brings forth feelings and words and attitudes and actions. And dear friend, we can take charge. We can take charge of our emotional life by our choices of what we're feeding our brain, what we're choosing to trust, 
and what we're thinking about life situations. By the way, um, I should mention this. The reason why the mind works this way is simply because of that awesome power of choice that God has given us. If I had no choice, I wouldn't have to worry about what I thought. I wouldn't have any choice about it. Make sense? Well, principle number two is whatever I sow, I reap. Whatever I sow in my mind. By the way, if you're a gardener and you plant corn in your garden, what kind of harvest can you expect? That's right. You can expect corn. If you plant peas in your garden, what can you expect to grow? That's right. Peas. Very simple. Very profound. Many, many people today are choosing to plant ugly, negative, hopeless, helpless thoughts into their mind and then they're expecting to reap peace and happiness and joy. Dear friends, it does not work that way because what we sow, what we choose to feed our mind on, directly affects our feelings and our re responses to life. Principle number three now. Principle number three is this, found in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Watch this close now. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. But we all, with open face beholding, that means looking, looking with an open face, just like we were looking in a mirror. Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. This is very interesting to me. There's a lot in that verse. But grab on to this principle. By beholding what I choose to look at actually changes me and makes me a different person. That can work either good or, either, or bad. But whatever a person chooses to behold, whatever a person chooses to give his mental attention to via his senses, through his eyes, his ears, his nose, directly affects his thoughts, feelings, and responses to life situations. That beholding principle is why, again, the Lord tells us very clearly that we are to look at pure things, feed our mind on healthy thoughts. The Lord knows we reap what we sow. The Lord knows that even in our thought life, what we choose to behold, what we choose to look at directly affects what we're thinking, directly affects our emotions, directly affects our physical health. Let me ask you a question. If a person actually wants to reap healthy feelings, healthier life, greater peace, greater joy, what kind of information, what kind of things do you suppose that person should feed their mind on? I'm sure you have the answer. I've got to start feeding. I've got to choose to start feeding my thought life with information that is true and accurate and positive. If, in a nutshell, if we are to profoundly change the way we feel and act, we must change the way we think, which begins by choosing what we are going to feed this mind on, what kind of information we're going to allow to enter our senses. Do you see how important this is, dear friends? So vital in this world where there's so much mass media, so much information coming into the senses. If you're struggling right now with hopelessness, if you're struggling right now with fear, if you're working hard to control your anger, if you're struggling with anxiety. May I suggest that, that you begin to actually choose to feed your mind on things that are hopeful and true, things that actually bring peace and not unrest. Well, I might just mention right now that We've got to have a healthy model of healthy behavior. We have to have an accurate source 
of information about what is right and what is wrong. In order to decide what I'm actually going to feed my mind on. Praise God for 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. I want you to go there now and bring you back to the importance of using God's word to find healing for your life. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Towards the back of the Bible, after 1 and 2 Thessalonians, we find 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And notice what the Bible says. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Doctrine is teaching about God. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All scripture, good for doctrine, what God is really like, the truth about God, good for reproof. Reproof tells me what's wrong. If I don't know what's wrong, I certainly can't discover what's right. For correction, not only does it show me the way God really is, not only does it show me what's wrong, but it also shows me what's right. And then, whoa, awesome. It also gives me instruction in righteousness. It actually shows me how to get right. God's word is an accurate moral standard, a standard for determining what is healthy, what is not healthy? What's right? What's wrong? And may I ask you, think with me, who is our accurate model of healthy behavior? So that I can actually have a living model of healthy behavior. I'm sure you guessed it. That's the reason why Jesus came to this earth so that he could actually reveal to us a healthy model, a model of healthy behavior that would bring healing, restoration, peace, victory, and happiness, not just for a few moments of time here on this earth now, but for the rest of eternity. I want that for my life, dear friends. How about you? Please tune in again. Thank you for being a part of this interesting look through different eyes at healing our thought life. God bless.